According to some, dogs are man's best friend, and around the world many people love their pet dogs. Indeed, some are so enamoured that they grow to look like their dog. But it's not just dogs. Pets come in all shapes and sizes. From the conventional to the less so, it seems that we love the companionship of animals. But has this always been the case? Earlier this year, a canine skull was discovered in a cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. This find pushed back the date of dog domestication to as early as 33,000 years ago. It seems that some wolves were in the early stages of domestication, hunting cooperatively with certain local human groups. Together, these early dogs and human beings would have made a formidable team, hunting together and fending off large predators collectively. However, change was in the air. The height of the Ice Age would bring with it a scarcity of food, and dogs were just one more mouth to feed. And thus human beings abandoned their relationship with wolves to fend for themselves. 20,000 years later, the Mesolithic saw a lush environment return to much of the world. And dogs once more became important hunting allies. Indeed, on some Mesolithic sites, dogs were afforded their own special burials. These animals were clearly respected, adored, and treasured. Around 7000 BC, the so-called Neolithic Revolution brought with it a new relationship with animals. The Neolithic saw domestication of animals come to the fore, and the concept of livestock began to develop. It is suggested by some that the concept of fences, the wild and the domestic, were key elements in the Neolithic. And though, for example, in linear band ceramic longhouses we sometimes see evidence of animals being brought inside, it is likely they were brought inside for their radiating warmth, or to protect them from the elements, not as pets. Ancient Egypt was one of the great agro-pastoral civilizations. They knew about farming. But we also know that they had a great respect for non-farm animals. For example, in Egyptian law, killing a greyhound warranted the same punishment as killing a human being. And of course, they had a feline goddess, Sekhmet, who was so holy that in a house fire, cats were to be rescued ahead of humans. Indeed, cats were afforded burials, much like, and in some cases better, than human beings. When we think of ancient Rome, we often think of lions fighting in the arena, or horses racing in the Circus Maximus. But it seems that the Romans also had pets. They liked dogs, for example, and even named their favourite hunting dogs in mosaics upon their floors. Not a dog person? Well, cats were also a favourite pet, if only because they were excellent at getting rid of vermin. Romans also kept birds for food, for entertainment, and for hunting. And rather famously, around 40 AD, the Roman Emperor Caligula attempted to make his favourite horse, Incitatus, a Roman consul in the Senate. He did not succeed, though the horse did become a priest. China, in the 7th century, saw the development of a new pet. These pets were small, easily traded, and most of all, easily cared for. I am, of course, talking about goldfish, the staple prize at any fairground, and by the 14th century, goldfish were being kept indoors in goldfish bowls. At the same time, on the other side of the world, in medieval Europe, animals were more likely to be workhorses. This is because, for the most part, with heavy taxation, animals were an extra mouth to feed, or they took up too much room in your town house. Thus, the agrarian ideal for many took precedent, and animals were seen as a means to an end. Though, of course, occasionally, who's to say that people didn't have a pet pig, for example? But for the most part, the only contact animals had with the home was when they came indoors to keep the house warm. Animals kept for luxury, or hunting dogs, for example, were almost exclusively the realm of the rich. They could afford to feed their pets, and also any associated veterinary bills. And therefore, you are far more likely to see a knight with a puppy than see a child with a puppy. Exotic pets were the playthings of royalty, and it is believed that Queen Elizabeth I herself owned and kept a pet guinea pig. Such animals remained signs of luxury until a growing middle class in the 19th century began to buy pets for their family and friends. And the relatively modern label of dogs being man's best friend was cemented in 1860, when the first dog foods came onto the market. So, What's next for people and pets? 
It seems that our relationship with pets has always been directly connected to our ability and willingness to feed them. With a growing global population, now 7 billion, this is likely to become a strained relationship. There is already talk of global food crises, for example. Archaeology suggests that our complicated relationship with animals may be about to enter a new chapter.